Pakistan has been considered one of the greatest cricketing sides in the world for years now. That's gone up in there. Safras takes the catch. It's all over. Pakistan win. They are feared by everyone and sometimes hold number one rankings in one format or another. How did we see such a great side suddenly crash and burn out of the World Cup embarrassingly? What happened to the electric fast bowlers? Bowman! Shaheen Afridi gets it. The explosive batsman. Baba is incredibly hungry. What happened to their never die attitude and team spirit? Why have the Shaheen suddenly lost their wings? This is Sportica. And today, we'll discuss the downfall of Pakistan cricket. Pakistan started playing cricket in 1947, playing its first ever international match in 1935. Right after independence, they got test status thanks to a recommendation from India, and they never looked back. They quickly earned a reputation as a strong and unpredictable team. The cricketing world was very scared of this nation, and rightfully so. The team never emerged as test great early on. Australia won the toss. Their two young openers, uh, Turner and McCosker, got them away to a good start. But in fairness to the Pakistan bowlers, they had a morning in which the luck simply didn't run for them. They were invited to the 1975 World Cup, but didn't make it past the group stage. And that is it. Pakistan all out for 205. Lily finished with remarkable figures. However, they shocked the world when they reached back-to-back -back semi-finals in the following two World Cups. The world wasn't ready for what happened next. Welcome to World Cup Cricket Classics. Today we're bringing you the 1992 World Cup Final between Pakistan and England from the MCG in Melbourne. In 1992, they took home the World Cup under Airman Khan's captaincy and earned the nickname Corner Tigers for never giving up. They beat favourites England by 22 runs in the finals with bowler Wasim Akram delivering a legendary performance. That's up in the air, he's getting under it, this could be victory, it is! Pakistan win the World Cup, a magnificent performance in front of 87,000 people. Imran Khan has went his side to victory, what a great victory! In the next World Cup, they lost out to bitter rivals India in the quarters. 1999 was another bright year for the team. Legendary bowlers Sakleen Mushtaq and Shoaib Akhtar joined the team and led the team to the World Cup final. Unfortunately, Australia's Shane Warren was simply unplayable on the day, and the dormant Australia took the trophy. And that's it. 133 for two. They didn't let this loss drag them down and won the 2000 Asia Cup thanks to some brilliant batting from Mohamed Yusuf. In 2007, they earned the runners-up trophy for the inaugural T20 World Cup with Shahid Afridi and Umar Gol shining bright. These talents led the team to win the 2009 edition of the same trophy. Afridi, Sigal Gali, Nigal Gay, Pakistan, 2009 T20 World Cup, GK. The 2011 ODI World Cup was not the best campaign as they lost the semi finals to host, champion, and eternal rival, India. But still knocked out by the winners isn't a bad result. Oh, that's gone miles in the air. Miles in the air, and it's caught! India won! In 2012, they won the Asia Cup by two runs in a thrilling final against an inspiring Bangladesh side. End of the block hole, great bowling. Of Pakistan winning the Asia Cup. 2015 wasn't great either as they were knocked by hosts and winners again, but this time in the quarterfinals against Australia. The 2017 champion trophy is a happy memory for all Pakistan supporters. The team totally dominated bitter rival India in the final with a 158 run win. Outside edge. That's gone up in there. Safras takes the catch, it's all over. Pakistan win. Fakhar Zaman's batting in that match was extraordinary. It's 50. Hassan Ali established himself as a real talent with the Player of the Series award. Hassan strikes again. All looked good for this side. Or did it? You may have noticed there were a few gaps here and there in the timeline of the events that we've just discussed. Well, that's because that was the best moments of Pakistan cricket throughout the years. You need to understand that a downfall for such a strong side doesn't happen overnight. Pakistan's downfall is a slow process that started a long time ago. The country started showing signs of serious decline as early as 2002 when they got out of the Champions Trophy in the group stages. This was extremely unexpected, as the side just came off from a deserving Asian Cup victory and a good run in the Champions Trophy. It served as a warning sign of what was to come. 
in 2003, the ODI World Cup rolled around again and the Pakistan team was not prepared. For the first time since 1975, the men in green did not make it past the group stages. Needless to say, the fans were devastated. Luckily for them, the team showed some signs of improvements in 2004, reaching the semi-finals in the Champions Trophy. They lost to West Indies, who ended up taking the trophy home, so the performance wasn't too bad, all things considered. So that's it. Their luck changed again, however. 2006 was a much worse year for Pakistan fans, as they had to see their team exit the Champions Trophy in the group stage. Following year 2007, they had another poor showing at the World Cup, failing to reach the knockouts in two consecutive tournaments for the first time in their entire history. Now, we need to discuss one of the darkest days in the history of cricket. 2009 attack on Sri Lankan cricket team is a tragic chapter for Pakistani cricket. In this horrifying incident, 12 gunmen attacked the bus of the Sri Lankan camp taking the lives of nine people and injuring nine more, including cricketing greats such as Chamin Vas, Kumar Sankakara, and Mahela Jawardeen. Insurance costs went up all over South Asia. Pakistan lost hosting rights for the upcoming 2011 World Cup, and many home series were cancelled. Players were simply too afraid to come to Pakistan. The situation got so bad that the team had to host their matches in the UAE. Surprisingly, the tragedy did not immediately affect the nation as the following three years were filled with solid performances and even brought them a trophy. 2013, however, is when the cracks started to show. They finished last in the group in their Champions Trophy, a performance not expected from such a talented generation. This generation let the fans down again in the 2014 and 2016 editions of the T20 World Cup. They failed to make it out of their group in both editions, and as one of the best T20 sides in the world, That's a big shot. this was extremely disappointing. They more than made up for it in 2017 with the Champions Trophy, according to fans. So much so that they had high hopes for the 2019 World Cup. Well, unfortunately for the fans, their faith wasn't rewarded. The green shirts did not make it past the group stage. Captain Safaras was heavily criticized for his decisions. The team stepped it up in the 2021 and 2022 editions of the T20 World Cup, reaching semis and 21 and making it to the final in 2022. It wasn't all smiles, however. In 2022, the team suffered a worrying defeat to Zimbabwe where they failed to chase a target of 130. Cricket experts could clearly tell this was not a good sign. The general public still held lots of hope for the upcoming tournament as they reached number one ODI ranking. As cricket buffs expected, 2023 was not the tournament that changed Pakistan's luck. Although it started off well with two victories, things quickly turned south. The team lost four matches in a row, including a humiliating defeat to India where they put up a target of only 191 target, which the men in blue chased with seven wickets in hand. They also lost to underdogs Afghanistan. They got two wins to regain hope, but finished with a loss to England by 93 runs after a disappointing chase. The nightmare continues for Pakistani fans as they just lost a test series against Australia. The test match! It is the end of the test match! So, what caused them to regularly disappoint their fans? A few conspiracy theories are floating around, such as a case of ethnic nepotism with Punjab region getting way more chances than Sindh and Balakistan. Ex-captain Rashid Latif also made an unproven claim that the players haven't been paid in five months. Former bowler Danish Kanaria, one of Pakistan's few non-Muslim players, claims there is a religious discrimination in the system. While these theories may have some truth to them, we will be looking at more factual matters. The downfall can be credited to three major issues, the board, the domestic system, and the players themselves. Let's start with the biggest issue, the board. Other than putting massive workloads on big players and failing badly at providing adequate security, the board also struggles to find a stable leader. Ramiz Raja's win-at-all-costs attitude got results, but it wasn't feasible in the long run, so his sacking wasn't a wild decision. Unfortunately, his successors failed to do any better. Najim Sethi brought in Mickey Arthur, who directed the team from England, earning the name Zoom Coach. The leadership style of each chairman was too different, the rules kept changing, and it got stressful for players to adapt to the change. 
Management got stressed too, leading to many resignations. Mohamed Hafiz resigned from the management committee right before the World Cup team selection. Chief selector Inzamum al -Haq resigned over allegations of conflict of interest in the middle of the World Cup. Fast bowling coach Morn Morkel resigned after the tournament. And what does the board do after these drastic changes? They sack the entire selection committee. Cricketing greats Dinesh Karthik and Harsha Bogle both agreed that this board was not up to the mark, with Bogle expressing some strong but justified opinions. But in general, with Pakistan, shorter the game, and in their current status, shorter the game, the better they will play. The longer the game, the more the deficiencies will come. The second biggest problem is the domestic system. Stability, good pitches, and poor team selection plague the local leagues. Harsha Bogle has suggested that the domestic first-class cricket, Taid Ali Zam Trophy, is not up to the standard. Now, first-class cricket, I'm happy to see there's, there's a whole new first-class structure that's now put in place, but they just bowl and they bowl and apparently they bowl themselves into the dust. It may be a reason why they're losing talent to other countries. England took Moeen Ali and Adil Rashid. South Africa took Imran Tahir. Australia has Usman Khwaja. All these Pakistani origin players are modern-day greats. Last but not least, the players themselves are slipping up. Gone are the days of amazing captains. Both Safaras and Barbara Azam lack the it factor. Former captain Asif Iqbal says it's because sporting culture is no longer part of the dressing room. Salman Butt spotted a clear lack of clarity among the players. They are indecisive and afraid. For a more technical analysis, there's also a serious lack of spin bowling talent. The mixture of out of form and inexperienced players is not working. There are also clear fitness issues in the team, pointed out by bowling legend Wasim Akram. Fitness level up, dekhe. Ham chikhe maare show pe teen hafte se ke do saal se inka fitness test nahi hua. Ab main ladkon ke individual naam loo. Lag da roz koi 8-8 kilo kudai khande ne, nehariyan khande ne. Fielding is all about fitness, and that's where we are lacking. Many call this a case of the cricketing cycle. It is naive to think that these things will get better on their own. Take the case of Kenya, for example. Actions need to be taken as the fans deserve better.